Hey, good morning everybody and welcome to the vlog. I hope the start of your day is absolutely incredible. Obviously my girl ate the largest meal I ever fed her before, but you know what? If I'm gonna talk about Ivy, the anaconda, I have to be wearing my new merch, right, for Ivy. So that's right, you can go down in the description before we get started. If you want merch, you can get Ivy, you can get free hugs Ivy, all that type of stuff. But she is doing absolutely incredible. She doesn't even look like she had a really large meal, to be totally honest with you. I have a feeling that what happens is two or three days after they bloat a little bit, she might look a little bigger tomorrow or even the next day. But I really wanna know how you guys like this new merch. Again, it wraps all the way around. And if you're, hey, if you're uh, also a Lucy fan, I've got something to show you. I'm gonna go ahead, come over here, real quick and show you what I've got going on with Lucy. If you guys so like this, uh, the first thing I gotta do is uh, look at how good Lucy is looking. But what I have to do first is I'm gonna set this camera down right here, right there. Oh. Okay, stay right there. Now, I tried this once before. I'm not sure if it's gonna work. It's, it's, a little, it's a little magic, but you have to really concentrate hard. Okay, ready? It worked, it worked! All right, you can actually get Lucy gear too. So we got Ivy, we got Lucy. These are only gonna be available for a limited time. So uh, link in the description, go get you some if you wanted to. Uh, thanks again for letting me start the vlog this way. Let's push our problem side. You guys know that I've been dealing with some issues, so I'm gonna try to push our problem side and just have an absolutely amazing day together. Guess what time it is? The first animal we have here is actually a corn snake that is het for blizzard. Now the blizzard corn snake are actually just kind of a white snake with the pink eyes. Just like this little monkey right here, absolutely gorgeous. And what that is is actually an albino, or what they call a muted black corn or a charcoal corn. So it's lacking the yellow pigment too because a normal snow corn that's a black corn will have yellow and that gives it its pattern. You take away the yellow and there's no pattern. So this is actually a gorgeous corn snake too. Look at the colors on her. Woo, dog, I tell you. And that's a beautiful clutch of eggs right there. We'll go ahead and get mama back in her cage real quick. Good job, mama. Mama will clean her cage up, get her some fresh water, get her all settled in, and we'll take a look at these eggs. We've got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve good eggs. And again, that's a het for blizzard bred to a blizzard. So we're gonna get blizzards, we're gonna get albinos, we're gonna get muted charcoal corns, and even some normal corns that are all het for blizzards. So a uh, beautiful way to start the Colubrid egg day. This next clutch is just actually an Okati corn snake. And let's see what she's got going on in here. It's a pretty snake, not such a pretty clutch. The clutch doesn't look like it's too good, uh, which is okay. She looks really good. We'll get her all cleaned up, get her water as always, and we'll take a closer look at this clutch. Like I said, it looks like a mixed bag where we've got some good eggs, we've got some bad eggs. You can definitely tell the difference. You know, obviously one, two, three really good eggs to these kind of sluggy, bad, yellowy, kind of squishy little M&Ms almost, like a little good and plenty, I guess is more like it. But uh, anyways, we'll just go ahead and take these bad eggs off of here. We got three eggs in this clutch. Again, not every clutch is gonna be beautiful. Not every clutch is gonna be huge. Not every clutch is gonna be fertile. That's part of the breeding season. All in all, it's been an amazing year. I mean, obviously, you can see all the eggs behind me, how good it's been. So uh, we've got one more clutch to pull today. By the way, two things that do help with the mental health part of my journey is that, number one, I'm doing stuff like this and working with the animals. I do get distracted and I start just really getting into it. It's really awesome. The other thing is, is that, uh, the universe has balanced itself out and my yellow dots are back on track. So let's hope no one touches that yellow dot thing uh, and I know everything's gonna be okay. Just really quick, I had another clutch of children's pythons hatch out and it's so interesting with the little children's pythons, how different each clutch is. I mean, the amount of variability you can see in each clutch, not only within the actual clutch, but from clutch to clutch. Like this animal here is really interesting to me because it looks more like a Stimson's python because it has those kind of really cool bars and stuff like that, really interesting. This almost looks a little bit more like a spotted python because it's really spotted and isn't quite as brown. This would be like a typical children's python here. So it's just really interesting how there's so much variability. Look at the reduction in pattern in this one right here. So it's really just cool, you know. That complete thing with children, spotted, Simpsons, all that stuff. It's just a really cool kind of group of animals. Again, dwarf pythons from Australia. We've having a crazy good year. I mean, we're gonna have a lot of these guys. I think this is our fifth clutch hatch, and we still have like seven or eight clutches to go. So a lot of Simpsons a lot of children, a lot of spotted pythons this year, but I absolutely love these little dudes. Just wanted to keep sharing with you all the babies that are hatching. Holy moly, look at the time, my friends. So uh, today I've got a lot, 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 lot to do. It's mainly a big feeding day, so it's not necessarily a bad day. It's a super fun day, but it's, there's a lot on my plate. And, and you know, as many people who keep a lot of lizards and stuff like that know, there's a lot of prep involved as far as like trying to feed and stuff like that. I'm already charged, I'm already wired, I'm ready to feed some animals. I'm sure you guys are ready to watch them too. So uh, I've got, man, look at this. I got a slew. 
in a slew. I don't even know what that is. Is that even a word? I'm really looking forward to trying a couple little tricks out. We're gonna do a give and do a couple little shots. Definitely feeding Dowser today. We we're feeding monitors today. We're feeding the mod and modas today. I'm even like I'm even go around feeding a couple little bug feeders, show you guys a couple little fun things I've been working on. As you guys know, we're really trying to push the boundaries when it comes to training reptiles. I mean, I think here at the Reptarium we have such special animals. They're so incredible. And the work that Bruce and myself are putting into trying to train these animals to do things that are kind of out of the box. You guys know that we already have been target training these animals quite a bit, but now what can we do next? You know, Elvis is doing really good with the stop and go technique. Can we continue to do that with other animals? And who knows what the future is? All I know is I want you guys to come here to the Reptarium and be blown away and really stretch your whole opinion of what reptiles can actually do. I wanted to give you just a little bit of an update. You know, I wanted to take a couple days to uh, digest things because it was a little overwhelming for me uh, about my mental health in that video. And I wanted to first thank everyone, each and every one of you that sent me messages, emails, uh, called the shop, uh, comments. I mean, it was the most overwhelming thing that I've ever experienced in my life and your support and your words and your suggestions really uplifted me. This battle is tough. It's, it's got ups, it's got downs. Today, I, I'm doing a little better. Not great, I feel pretty tired and exhausted mentally. Uh, I feel kind of lightheaded like I'm walking on air or something like that. Um, but I, I know we'll get through this, right? Uh, I want to just occasionally update you guys so that you know what I'm going through and also the emails and messages I got that so many of you are dealing with similar things I want to be here to inspire you to tell you that we will be better we will get okay there will be another side to this and I just wanted to tell you all how much I love you and how much I appreciate you and how much all of your thoughts and all the things you've done for me does matter but remember to do that to everybody, right? Because there's so many millions of people that are just like me suffering and be, be that way to them. I wanna be that way. And when I get better, which I will, I wanna continue to preach the message of loving life and being happy and finding balance and going after your dreams because without happiness, none of it matters. I have everything I could have ever imagined I wanted. A great zoo, family, friends, crew, everything. And my happiness has been so horrible, I can't enjoy hardly any of it. And I know I will again, you know, and I know that I'm going to. And I just wanted to update you guys. I'll try not to bore you too often with these updates, but I just wanted to tell you that I appreciate you. Thank you, I will be okay. Um, 
it's not going to be overnight, but it, I'm going to make it through. And, and let me know in the comments if you want me to occasionally update you or if there's anything else you'd like me to talk about. So uh, that's it. Let's, uh, let's get back to some animal stuff. Down here in the dungeon, and that can only mean one thing. And this girl is actually a lesser female. She's got one little egg out, and she was actually bred to a super pastel hidden gene woma, so we could get a bunch of pastel soul suckers, soul suckers, a bunch of stuff like that, which is going to be really cool. We're just going to go ahead and remove this little egg right here. We'll put this over here in the box, and then we'll see what Mama has under here. All right, Mama, come on. We're just going to get you off. You did really good, Mama. Oh, all these eggs are kind of loose in here, so I'll probably have to just candle them a little bit, but wow, I tell you what, this is a nice clutch right here, and again, really weird when you have a whole clutch like this that none of of them are attached to one another. It's kind of unusual. And the thing that's interesting is for people that are thinking about breeding snakes, of course, ball pythons lay about 30 days after the shed, right? Well, this girl was almost 40 days after the shed. So that just gives you a little bit of example about not panicking. She had a beautiful clutch, no problems whatsoever. We've got two, four, six, seven good eggs. Uh, not a bad way to start the day. Come on, banana monster. Come on, banana monster. Come on down, let's go. There you go, Bella. There's my banana monster. What are you doing, girl? You know, I tell you, I've been feeding Bella bananas forever. You know, it just is a treat because it's not a good diet for them long term. But you know, once in a while, giving her a banana as a treat is a really good enrichment thing for her. Plus, it's not bad for her diet to be varied up for sure. But I had thought about it. You know, I never have actually fed Diddy and Dixie a banana. And I don't know if they like it or not. They're a little bit weird about what they eat, just like Bella's weird about what she eats. And you know, typically she wants three bites and that's it. We'll see if she wants a fourth bite or not. But I figure I've got a banana for Diddy and Dixie, and uh, let's just go ahead and see what we can do with those guys, because they are absolutely incredibly crazy. And as you can see, three bites and Bella is done. Let's go see if Diddy and Dixie wants to eat. So let's see if these guys like it. Do you want a banana? Oh, I think he likes it. Dixie, do you want? Uh-oh, I think that he's going crazy with it. I think they love it. Oh my gosh, they're banana monsters too. What are you doing, silly? Oh my gosh, that is so absolutely incredible. Again, this is the first time. You want that one, baby? There you go, bud. There you go. There you go. Diddy just wants the peel. Oh, you guys are loving it. <laughs> It's the craziest experience to have lizards like this, guys. I mean, look at this. There goes Diddy. Oh, yeah. I think they're happy. So, I guess uh, Bella isn't the only banana monster in the house these days. There you go, Diddy. Tell you what, guys. Uh, it's, it's insane. These animals are just the most insane pair of animals I've ever seen. They're not only jealous of one another, constantly wanting to eat what each other want to eat and stuff like that, but that actually drives them. It's good from a behavior standpoint because if Dixie is jealous of Diddy, we can get her to do things just out of jealousy. They definitely love bananas. So now we just have one more treat we can give them when people come to actually feed them here at the Reptarium. Uh, absolutely incredible. As a matter of fact, if you guys don't follow me on TikTok yet, I'm posting a really cool video of uh, Diddy and Dixie climbing up Bruce. You guys will definitely want to check that out. Again, TikTok, Brian Barchett, go check that out. This is pretty interesting. This is actually a het hypo blood red and then a het for scaleless tiger. This is the first scaleless tiger clutch that we've had. I'll show you that male real quick. It's just kind of an interesting pattern. It's this male right here, again, just kind of has that kind of almost like tigery look to it. Just a little bit different than a normal scaleless. Don't know if it's gonna be something genetic, but this is the first time that he's actually fathered a clutch. So hoping for some good eggs. Fingers crossed. Yep, all right, good eggs. And you can see, look at how beautiful this female is right here. That's a really, oh, she's got an egg in her though. Look at that. And unfortunately that egg is way up high, so we can't can't express or massage out that egg. What we gotta hope happens is that she'll eventually push that egg down closer to her vent, and then eventually we can actually help get her out. This is uh, this is something that you don't wanna see for sure, because when they're higher up like that, it's usually a much harder time to get them out. So I'm just gonna put that girl in here, let her get settled in and stuff like that. We'll give you an update in the next couple days. Hopefully she'll push that egg down, we can get the egg out of here. In the meantime, it's actually a beautiful clutch of eggs. At least that's one thing that's really good. And again, this is the first time this male has five any eggs. So there's two, four, six, eight absolutely beautiful eggs right here. So here in another couple months, we'll find out if that tiger is something that passes on. That would be pretty cool. And that wraps up eggs for the day. My boy RJ's been out all morning. Hey, Arj, what's going on? I know. He's like, no, dad, don't get me. Don't get me. Come on, RJ. Ah. Oh, RJ. Time to go back, buddy. Gotta go. Oh. oh my gosh. He's gotten so big. Let's go back in your pond, sweetheart. Let's go. You had a bunch of time to have fun out and about, but now it's time to go back home. Okay. Whew. He's getting big. Pretty soon he's not going to be able to run around because uh, 
I don't think I'll be able to pick them back up to get them back in pretty soon. And that's right, we have this huge clutch of ball pythons. This is actually a heifer albino ball python right here, and it's just bred to an albino male. So half the clutch on average should be albino, half the clutch will be het. We'll see what mama has going on, but I'm telling you what guys, this looks like a big clutch of eggs. That, I, I gotta imagine at least will tie our 12 eggs. Maybe it'll even surpass it, I'm not sure. Nevertheless, Mama is not happy. Whoa, come on, Mama. That's all right, she's just, she's protecting her eggs, so I've gotta be a little bit careful with her for sure. Uh, make sure she doesn't bite me while I'm taking these eggs away. Come on, Mama, that's okay. I'm just gonna go ahead and get these eggs out of here and we can count them up. Oh my gosh, that is a big clutch of eggs. So we'll go ahead and put these in here and then get the rest of the eggs. Oh my gosh, that is, a, I was not expecting this huge of a clutch. I mean, she certainly looked gravid, but I didn't think she was gonna be that gravid. Oh my gosh, that is a big clutch of egg. Get these over here and uh, I'm gonna separate this one little egg out because I won't be able to close the box. Thankfully, they're pretty fresh in here, so they, they separate out really easy. So we have two, four, six, eight, 10, 12 eggs. Well, we didn't beat it, but I knew we were gonna hit at least 12 eggs. That's right, 12 eggs, that is awesome. And again, you know, even just producing six albinos in here, or eight albinos, whatever the number is, that's awesome because those are such beautiful snakes. I love producing animals like albinos because they just make such great pets and they're so absolutely beautiful. So 12 eggs, good job, mama. Again, guys, thank you so much for all your support i hope that you enjoyed the video if you did here's a playlist of a bunch of baby snakes because you know we're going to have a lot of babies hatching out pretty soon could you also support my podcast channel right up here it's called checking in i think you'll like it on this side you can subscribe to this vlog channel turn your post notifications on if you don't mind have an absolutely wonderful day remember be kind to someone and i promise i'll see you tomorrow